Alright, hey guys, Mr. Kyle Myers Mathematics, and uh, this is going to be a little bit up to just uh, one take, because I want to show you kind of the authenticity of what it looks like to look at a problem that you haven't, you know, rehearsed first, and then look at it, figure it out from the start, and uh, kind of just go about how you would uh, solve a problem without... Uh, kind of, you know, having to be rehearsed or anything. So, if you hear something in the background, or if you see a little bit of static or whatever, that's what's happening. But uh, let's go ahead and dive right into it. This is Mr. Kyle, Marsh Mathematics, and we have a planet that's moving in an elliptical orbit, and it has a star at one of the foci. The perihelion, which is a term that I've never heard of before, um, the smallest distance from the planet to the star, okay, is 128.03 millions of miles, and the aphelion, the largest distance from the planet to the star, is 154.93 millions of miles. Find an equation of the planet's orbit around the star. Okay, so it looks like they give us uh, pretty much everything in the picture here. Uh, it gives us a hint, but uh, sometimes you don't really need the hint. What we're trying to do is if it's uh, an elliptical orbit, then we want an ellipse, right? So, if we want an ellipse, um, and it looks like it's centered at the origin, so it would just be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. So really, uh, if it's centered at the origin, um, and the planet's moving around this ellipse, you know, like so, then uh, we just need to figure out what a and b are. That's uh, that's it. So let's let's see. The perihelion. Let's look at that again. The smallest distance from the planet to the star. Well, it says the star is at the foci. So this is this is the foci. So this star is at the point. Uh, let's say let's say f comma zero. Okay. Um, and then it says that perihelion, the smallest distance from the planet to the star, is 128.03 millions of miles. So, this distance, right here, or, or maybe it would be better to, to label this distance right here, perihelion, 128.03. Alright, cool. And then it says, the aphelion, or ap apihelion, no idea. Um, is 154.93 millions of miles. Um, I'm going to leave out the fact that it's millions of miles because that's really not that important. Um, you just need to remember for your answer that you know your distances is in millions of miles, and it looks like they already accounted for that in the answer. So we can just ignore the the fact that it's millions of miles. Okay. So the a aphelion is 154.93 millions of miles. Okay, well, the aphelion is actually not that much more. I mean, the, the picture looks like it's not drawn to scale here. But it's not that much more. And remember, um, if there's a foci, if there's a focus, then there are two foci. So the other place where there would be a focus would be right here. At negative f comma zero. So the aphelion can be... Uh, kind of condensed down into the perihelion distance, which is that 128. And then there's two of these exact same distances. Now, I know it doesn't look like it's to scale here, but kind of bear with me. I didn't draw it perfectly. This distance from here to here would be the focus. So you have the focus, the focus, the perihelion, and the aphelion. So we can actually figure out what's going on here just based on the information that they've given us, which, of course, is the whole point of this, right? So if I, if I break this down, um, the aphelion thing, we know it's 154.93. 154.93. That's the aphelion. Okay. Well, that's made up of... The perihelion, which we know, that's 128.03. That would be this distance right here. And then two of the focus, which we don't know. There's two of them, though. There's two focus distances in there. So we can actually just solve it. It would just be 128.03, 128.03, subtract, subtract, 
uh, and then whatever that is, and then you would uh, divide that by 2. So 2f, and then you would divide that answer by 2. So we can go ahead and do that. Whip out my calculator. Alright. I'm also kind of doing this on a park bench. Like I said, it's very impromptu. So let's look at this here. We would want to do 154.93 minus 128.03. So I get 26.9. Divide that by 2. And I get 13.45. Okay, so 13.4. That's actually not that much. And that was 26.9. Uh, 26.9. And divide that by 2, and I get 13.45. So that is the focus distance. Why is that important? Because that's also, you know, that's that's what we're going to use. That's C. We really should call that C, because we're about to use the, uh, the formula to figure out the rest of the stuff. Well, um, the, the aphelion is made up of two of the focuses and then the perihelion. Well... If I want the vertex, if I want the vertex, it looks like it would be the A. A would be equal to the perihelion, which is 128.03, plus the focus distance, which is 13.45. So I can just add those guys up. 13.45 plus 128.03. And I get 141.48. 141.48. So that's my A. That's my A distance. That's my vertex distance. Now, um, and then I can figure out what B is. Because I have to know what A and B are. So you're like, well, why did you find out what C was? Well, I found out what C was just because I needed to start somewhere. I needed to start with something and find something out. So I found C. It's not going to be useful in my final answer. But it could be useful, and in fact, it is actually going to end up being useful because I'm going to use it to find out what B is. I need to find out what B is in order to finish my equation. So I now know what A is. Um, and then I could figure out what C is by using the equation A squared minus B squared equals C squared, which is the focus equation for an ellipse. Okay, well, A squared, 141.48 squared minus b squared equals c which is 13.45 square that as well um, so I'm going to subtract this it's going to be 141.48 quantity squared subtracted from that I'm not doing any math because I'm actually just going to type it all into the calculator all at once and let the calculator do all the work so I'm just going to subtract all of that and get rid of it all. So then that's going to be there. And then I have negative b squared equals 13.45 squared minus 141.48 squared. Um, and then if I make this positive, I'm going to have to divide both sides by negative. So it'd be negative, that'd be positive. Uh, and then I would take the square root. So it's the square root, kind of a funky square root, but there it is. And that would give me what B is. I don't need to worry about plus or minus because I only need uh, a positive number for this. So I'm going to... Oh, you know what? Actually, I don't need to do some of this. Let me uh, go back a little bit. I forgot that I don't need to square root it because I need B squared, so I don't need to solve for B. I only need B squared, so it makes my life a little bit easier. I just need to do 141... 0.48 squared minus 13.45 squared and I get a huge number looks like I get 19835.69 19835.69 and this is multiple choice so I don't really need to round too much uh, maybe I'll just round to one decimal place that's equal to b squared. And then there you have it. Um, because I've got a and I've got b. Here's a. Here's b squared. I don't actually have b. I could take the square root of that. But I don't need to because the formula is x squared 
over a squared, so I do need to figure out what a squared is, 141, 141.48 squared is 20,000. So let's just say 20,000, because again, it's multiple choice, so it doesn't really matter too much how close I get. Um, I can round even to one sig fig, and it would be fine. And then y squared over, let's just say another 20,000, but it's basically another 20,000. I mean, it's just shy of that. I'll go ahead and write the whole number, whatever. 35.7 equals 1. Alright, so I just have to figure out which one that is. Uh, well, it's not A, because A has 180. C is looking pretty good, actually. 20 and then a 16. 5904. Yep, that looks good. And then the Y, 19835 Yeah, actually, it looks like it's going to be C. But let's check the others just to be safe here. X is the 180. Okay, and there's no 180 in there. And then uh, for D, it looks like it's the reverse of C. So a very close answer to C, but the wrong answer because X uh, is going to be longer than Y. It's going to be left and right. Y is up and down. So X goes left and right. And that means that that's going to be the longer one because I have the focus right there. I have the focus going left and right, which means the longer distance is from left to right. All right and that's actually where I'm going to end for today because that is the problem. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If it was helpful, uh, throw me a like and subscribe. All that good stuff. And of course, if you haven't gotten my awesome free guide, the five math mistakes everyone makes and how to avoid them, it is for free on my website myersmathematics.com and I will see you guys in another episode